שלום, שלום, שבת, אדוני. Welcome to the Six Exodus program. Thank you for listening. The name of this segment is Lay Aside Every Weight. I'd like to read to you one short scripture to focus my point on. And this segment is going to be a little more, um, less informative. And more personal. Okay, let's begin reading. If you have your Bibles, I'm coming from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse number 1 and 2. That, that were all the scriptures I will be reading. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so many great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so be easily beset us. And let us run this race with patience. The race is set before us, looking for, looking unto Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Dispensing the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. Now, um, uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, laying aside every weight. I'd like to say to you that um, I've shared with you before as far as practicing. I'd like to talk to you more today about that practice that you should practice. To practice to be stronger and to have more in-depth walk with God and that God will open your eyes so that you can see more spiritually and walk more spiritually. In fact, it will allow you to pursue holiness wholeheartedly. Not that you don't, it's just that uh, practicing is so important to do so. This also comes with spiritual growth and discipline, patience, and endurance. This will allow you to to get a closer walk with God through all these attributes that I just mentioned. Okay, to do so, to lay aside every weight, the most important thing that you have that is a part of your body right now while we are in captivity is to practice. And what is to practice? Is to empty your mind with necessary non-essentials. What are those things? These are trivial things that has no value. They have no value at all. But yet, these things have become so important to you. They will um, ruin most of your days and add prevention to you being in the realm or in the spirit with God and pursuing holiness and righteousness. That's why I want you to know that it's so important to practice. Not just during the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is very important. It is a high day. And of course, you know, the Sabbath is Friday sunset until Saturday sunset. This is the high day. If you are practicing, then you can learn so many things on the Sabbath day. Because it's a holy day, you can learn more if you are practicing. And if you are, you spend time emptying yourself even on that day. 
And it's going to require discipline to be a child of God. You have to pursue holiness. You have to pursue righteousness. I tell you, God does not reveal things unto those who do not pursue him. If you want to pursue God, you are a child of God, and you want to pursue him and pursue righteousness, you must seek wisdom in the fear of God. It's the avenue to the wisdom and knowledge of God, and you must practice it. And you must be disciplined. This is warfare, children. And if you want to be a child of God, you have to enter warfare and be disciplined. You know how you have to learn how to sit still. You have to learn how to not talk. Be quiet. You have to practice quietness. Practice contriteness. Contriteness means to be sorry for one sin. And you have to practice these things every day. Now, the Sabbath is a high day. And you can learn more and you can see more. And you can, you can develop a relationship with wisdom. She will teach you and lead you in many things. She is really a beautiful person. Now, to lay aside every weight is there are a lot of things that Satan, who is a, a deceiver, and he's also accuser of the brethren. So when you're a child of God, you have to learn spiritual warfare. And your spiritual warfare is to practice. You cannot be a great athlete unless you practice. And to be a son of the living God, you must practice. Learn how to sit still. Learn how to be patient. You must learn how to practice. To, keep, to empty one's mind. And it's a, quite a task when you first begin. Because when things enter into your mind, for example, you're watching TV, television. The things that are said on television, they can affect you very much. So you have to practice. You have to empty those things that you saw on TV out. Now you say, well, I just want to watch TV. Well, that's up to you. But you have to be disciplined if you make that statement. You have to turn it off. And when will you turn it off? And when you say, I will make, uh, I will learn information or Keep track on what things are in, in the world. Now let me uh, say this. I realize. That there are many sheep. And uh, the sheep of God's pastor. Are. Different. Uh, different. Uh, different wounds. And because of poor shepherd. Poor shepherdship. And God's people has been wandering without being shepherding. And it's, so they've been, they all been laid out to different pastors. And uh, now I'll tell you about a sheep. A sheep has, um, has no defense. Has no defense. Not at all. That's why you have to have a shepherd. A sheep has no defense. God has not given, he's given all the animals a defense. But not a sheep. He's not giving them a defense. Because he is the chief shepherd. But this I was saying. Is that there are. Classification of sheep. At least from my perspective. Now there. Because we have so many different faiths. And so many. Um, misunderstandings. And misinterpretations. Some of them purposely done. Most by the heathens that don't know nothing. And of course by uh, people who proclaim to know a lot. Who wants to be important. Who wants to be seen. And of course believe it or not. There are people out there.
that want they are being paid to say a lot of things that are not not true they are sent to misguide and mislead God's people and the people are looking for all different types of food to eat just like a sheep looking for different grass to eat wandering so they are wandering sheep they're out there wandering and oftentimes sheep eat things they're not supposed to eat that's why you have to have a shepherd to make sure the sheep is eating what they're supposed to eat if the sheep are with a shepherd then they will eat and they will eat the same thing that shepherd has been eating and if you cut a sheep open you will find the same thing that the shepherd has been eating they will eat and you can tell the difference in them because they've been eating the same food that the shepherd's been eating but if they've been eating all kinds of junk from different shepherds that will show also so um, you have wandering sheep and you also have um, wounded sheep wounded sheep has been hurt by other sheep and some sheep that are wounded have been hurt by pastors and so they are not interested in being associated with anyone or talking to anyone or sharing with anyone because they are very protective and they do not want to be hurt they went through very painful experiences in their lives which leads to hermitizing to being hermit you got a lot of people God's people have become hermits they don't go outside they don't associate with anyone they don't talk to anyone they stay within their home they only come out to uh, to throw away the trash or to be able to buy more food they have become hermit because they have become they have found so many people to be disingenuous and cruel selfish and all the other adjectives that goes with why not associate with people some people have turned to having pets and want to associate with their pets rather than people because they cannot trust people anymore and of course you have isolation sheep sheep that have isolated themselves don't want to befriend anyone don't want to talk to anyone I'll tell you um, you can practice but you still have to interact with people that's how the word is being shared is some some people will only know the, the word of God through you and if you don't share with them not that you can make everyone see only the most high can open eyes and those who God open their eyes so they can see what did John say he said are you the one or shall we look for another and the most high said tell John that I am he who have come to open the blind eyes to set the captives free so all these sheep according to Jeremiah chapter 23 that the shepherd has done a poor job in teaching God's people and not being in a position to help God's people they just don't know how so the people have wandered and there are wolves that are on every mountain ready to devour our people from false advertisement to constant um, bombardment of media um, church um, literature and sending them all types of um, false teachers and false prophets people telling them all kinds of things even telling people it's okay to hate people you know um, just have to be careful out there but um, this one thing I'm telling you now is you must practice and empty yourself of all of these feelings and emotions the feelings and emotions you cannot become emotional hateful arrogant or resentful 
against people. These things are darkness. You have to separate yourself and be a child of God and pursue holiness and pursue righteousness. Regardless of what people say, what they do, how they feel, and how they treat you or people in your family, your loved ones, you cannot hate them. You cannot form an opinion about them. You must practice and empty yourself of these feelings and emotions. You must go above these feelings and emotions. Don't let feelings and emotions dictate your life or your tongue. There are many emotions and feelings a person can feel, but do not let your feelings and emotions make your decisions in your life. What you feel, let me give you a scenario. If you, if you had a job and you didn't feel like going to work, you probably would not get paid. Do you understand what I'm saying? That feelings and actions cannot be predicated on what's, what's real and what is legitimate and what is most required. So you don't always make your decisions based on how you feel. You have to be patient and don't be always so quick to give an answer or response. You can wait or you can tell someone, let me let me think about that and let me get back with you. And so practicing is very important. Uh, to practice is to be learn how to sit still for hours if you if you have the time. Well, especially on the Sabbath day, because the Sabbath day is a time where uh, it's supposed to be set aside for the Lord. So you have Friday sunset until Saturday sunset to practice. And if you set aside this time to learn how to sit still, to practice and to empty your feelings, if you haven't had a chance to empty your feelings the day before or the week before of things that you have heard, there's a lot of things that are going on in the world that can keep your mind occupied on these things that are not essential. See, um, let me tell you one of the secrets of the Satan. He likes to occupy your mind with him. If he is on your mind, you're not concentrating on the Lord, nor are you dwelling on the Lord your God. So you have to practice and empty yourself of feelings and emotions. And at the beginning, it's kind of hard to do. You, things keep coming back into your mind. So you're like you're trying to get rid of it, erase it, and get it out of your mind to think about something positive or sing a song. But the same thing keeps coming back in your mind. Keep emptying. Keep emptying until you get more powerful, more stronger, more stronger. And you will be able to get everything, all these feelings and emotions hatred and malice, envy, old memories, old sins, get them out of your mind and you'll be able to practice and you will be able to uh, fight the good fight and you cannot be bombarded with the things of the world and those who like to occupy media space and to keep your mind off of the mouse high and dwelling on him that you will be able to co concentrate and to cope with things it's like being in a storm and yet selectively be able to choose anything you like out of a storm you have that much control because you are the children of the most high but you need to practice and know that you are in a warfare this is not a game. This is a warfare. You have to know how to practice. It's good to be able to identify and have knowledge of things around you. But you also need to have the ability to ascertain 
the blessings that are with you. And for that, you must practice. You must empty yourself of weakness, even desires, because on just about every commercial on TV, it's about sex. And so you have to empty yourself. It's not necessary to watch TV every day. It's not necessary. You can do without it. There's a lot of things that you can do without. It will help you to practice more. Um, see, images, once they come into your mind, that's what commercials are so... Um, they use commercials for to be able to bombard your mind so that you would, uh, cannot concentrate on the Lord or God's laws or being obedient to his objectives and the good the good laws and the counsels of the Lord and that your heart would be full of blessings and honor and not cursings. That's why the Lord looks at the heart of a man. So uh, all these advertisements, a lot of them are towards you. Uh, even TV movies, they're toward you. They want to keep you from doing God's will and have you to concentrate on what they want you to do. For example, I'm not saying anything negative toward the writer or and I did not go to the movie because I'm in a defensive mode. Um, everyone wanted to go see this movie and the movie it it got uh, seven seven hundred million dollars of our people and um, it was a mockery because our people the last king we had was Jehoiakim and Hezekiah both of them die in, in jail here in America. And don't think the American people don't know it because they killed them. It's in, in uh, Jeremiah chapter 52. The last two kings we had, American, they killed them. They brought them to Babylon, went to Jerusalem, burnt Jerusalem down. See, all these things uh, white people don't want you to know. But um, together, we help each other. Even though we never seen each other, we can uh, we can we can reach each other because God is just that good. Now uh, back to practicing. I want you to pursue holiness and pursue righteousness, as if your life depended on it. Yeah, let me share with you this analogy, and you can understand more what I'm talking about. Have you ever uh, desired to go somewhere and when you were ready to go, you couldn't find your keys? And so, okay, of course, you can't go anywhere unless you have your keys. And uh, so you go get ready to go and you wanted to go, but you can't find your keys. So you start frantically looking for your keys because you can't go anywhere without your keys. You need to get back in the house and you need to go. You need to drive. And so your keys are very important. That's how important you are. And that is also, also how you need to pursue righteousness and holiness. Just that frantically. Being able to be under the umbrella of God. And to practice keeping your body and your mind empty. I tell you, do not let the devil occupy any space in your mind. Give that rascal an eviction notice. Do not allow the devil to occupy any space in your mind. Keep your mind solely on God. Listen to scriptures, Bible scriptures. There are a lot of good ministers. They have got good, uh, good teaching, good sermons. I'm not talking about how to get rich and how to be successful. I'm talking about sermons, messages, and word from the Lord. Listen to the word of God. Now the word of God is, is our 
It's our word. It's the word of God for us in this day. The Lord knew where we will be. He told Abraham what we will be. In the book of Genesis chapter 15. He told Abraham where we will be. He knows where we are. And he knows what we are doing. And he knows when he will redeem us. And what time. So um, I want to encourage you to practice. And uh, if you are one of those sheep, uh, heal and then help your brother to heal. You help your sister to heal. If they are isolated and if they are not so hardwired in to these teachings of uh, uh, the teaching of uh, white people being supreme as they want you to be. And so they see that um, that they are not. Well, they know they are not. But that's why uh, Darwin did his theory when he found out about us. And they wondered, well, who are we? But white people don't know that they're in the Bible. They're called Chaldeans. Um, maybe some of them know. Maybe some of them know. And the Assyrians founded this land for them. But the, the children of Ham was here before they were. America has been a country many times before the white people arrived here. But they always have their history to tell. But again, we don't want to be any bashing on white people. We know who they are and God knows who we are. And God would judge them as he told Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 15. Just hold out. That's why I'm giving you uh, this talk today. So that you can endure hardness as a good soldier. Practice. And pursue righteousness. Pursue holiness. And learn how to empty your mind from all these demonic mind traps which occupies your mind and don't let the devil come in to your mind just like a revolving door and take your mind off of things you know they're sending you all types of subliminal messages through the TV they are against you they are against you they have hated you that's why they brought you here to be slaves. Because they want to kill you and destroy you. And don't think just because they give you money or job or a title that they love you. They did this to our people. When they told them that you're a Mason. You're a 32 degree Mason. And you don't, you don't have anything. They just say you are a 32 degree Mason. But you don't get no money. There's no certificate, no reward or trophy or nothing. They just say you are. You are a 33 degree mason. You are powerful. And let me tell you how to stand and you can have this. Or you shake someone's hand and you can be like this. See all this, like this, all this stuff. Bunch of, bunch of junk that, um, that white people have created. All to be able to to conceal and hide our identity but even that you know these things you must empty yourself against white people don't let that be your trap because the Lord is looking for righteous and pure people and holy people like him um, so there are a lot of white things people white things a lot of things white people has done since they've been on the earth. But you have the responsibility of emptying yourself and being merciful as the Most High is merciful. You know, all the time I would think about old Jonah when he, um, when he ended up by that bramble tree when he went to Nineveh. And the reason why he wanted to not go to Nineveh. And for once, the people, the Nineveh, people of Nineveh, they was um, warlike people. Like, like, uh, 
these people here in America. And then the Lord told him to go to Nineveh. It's like sending him in the midst of the Ku Klux Klan and saying to them, repent or else go to hell. That's what uh, that's why Jonah ran away. But even so, um, when he didn't do and God did not destroy Nineveh. And Jonah was upset because God didn't. And see, we too have to be able to accept the same thing. We don't know what God will do. We don't know because God is a merciful God. We have no idea what he will do. Now he is um, very powerful and he knows what will be for generation to generation. He knows what will be. And no one knows the mind or the heart of God or what he will do. But it's up to you to practice and keep yourself as God's people and practicing righteousness and pursuing holiness. You know, you know how you try to do something good to somebody to to gain someone's favor. That's uh, pretty much what you have to do for the Lord. If you love him, do things that are pleasing in the eyes of the light of God. Be charitable. Charity covers a multitude of faults and sins. Um, just some suggestions as far as doing charity work. Now, a lot of you um, may not go to church. You found out that church is not um, the thing to do or the place to go. But the best thing to do is to practice. But you can do a lot of community work. Uh, go to a nursing home. There are things like um, when you go to a nursing home, you can pass ice. You can comb people's hair. You can cut their fingernails. You can paint their fingernails. You can wash their hair. Um, you can just go there and talk. You can do laundry. You do the same thing at the VA hospitals. Regular hospital, go visit the sick. Um, some places you can go to jails or prisons. Some you have to check it out and see it, if it is possible to visit. And um, uh, homeless shelters. Or a place where people are homeless. If you have clothes, uh, take clothes, uh, wash their clothes, bring them back. Um, these are great things. Um, and uh, money, so your neighborhood, people in your neighborhood, help them out with money. People that are poor, you know they are poor. Don't pretend that you don't know who is poor in your neighborhood. Help the poor and give. Yeah, God has blessed you financially. You can help people financially, but if you don't have it, you can't. But there are other things you can do. There are elderly people. Check on the elderly in your neighborhood. Check and see if they, they're eating or visit them and see if they are all right. Just knock on the door and say, hey, I just came to stop in and see how you're doing. And, you know, uh, after they see, you see how they're doing, go ahead and ask them, you mind if I check on you from time to time? Those things are very important and essential. What the word says that love your neighbor as yourself. Check on it. And don't think that they are, your your neighbors are tiresome or a nuisance or a thorn in your flesh. Which there possibly, possibly it may be. But nevertheless, God put you there to be amongst them that you can be a light in their life. And you can you can help them. And I will tell you this. Do not set your your communications too high. If you are practicing and other people around you are not practicing, there's no need for you to tell them that you are practicing and that you're living this type of a life and that you're not a Christian. It's not important. What is important is that you set your your trough at an eating level. What do I mean by that? If you're going to feed another person, do not talk to them at the level that you are at. Set the bar down lower 
and ask them, what is your favorite scripture? Or ask them, say, what is your favorite reading in the Bible? Or what they then talk to them on that level and then go from there. But don't talk to them at your level of understanding, your cognizance. Your cognizance or understanding about God is probably higher than the next fellow. But consider his understanding. Ask them, what is your favorite scripture? What do you like to talk about? What is your favorite story of the Bible? Come down to his level. I tell you, all eagles must come down and eat. Eagles cannot eat in the sky. They must come down and eat. All the food is down here. So you have to feed people down here, not up there. Okay, if you have a more in-depth knowledge and you're eating more meat than eating uh, baby food, then you have to talk to other people at the level where they can. Now, if you can, if you can share with them and they can digest the food that you're saying to them, well, that's great. That's great. But if not, you say to them, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? Do you comprehend what I'm saying? And then um, go from there and then ask for a response. Say, OK, from from what you understand, what did I say to you? Ask them that and then let them tell you and always let them share at their understanding, not at your understanding, because they have to grow to where you are. And so they cannot be where you are. That person will be called a thief and a robber. You cannot make a person learn without knowing what you know remember the story I was telling you earlier concerning the uh, the sheep that had the shepherd has has food and he feeds the sheep that are with him that's that's it if you are if you have a shepherd and he is feeding you or you're listening to someone else teaching then the same knowledge he will have, the same knowledge you will have. And you will learn how to be more stronger, more dedicated, uh, a stronger warrior. And uh, you'll be able to do more work for the Lord and help others. In fact, pull some of the, pull some of the brethren out of the fire. Okay. Um. Keep concentrating on the Lord and keep sprinkling the word of God on God's people. Remember, God, you can plant the seed, but God gives the increase. Don't try to convert everybody in one day. God gives the increase. Just plant the seed. Just that simple. Okay, just plant a seed. Plant a seed just a little. Just a little. But work on yourself. I tell you a thing, and then I'm going to end this segment. You cannot change people. And what did I say? You cannot change people. You can only change yourself. You cannot change people. No matter how close they are to you. They are your children, your relatives, your mom, your dad. No matter how much you learn spiritually, you cannot change people. You can only change yourself. You live the life and then people will see the life of Christ in you and then they will change. But um, you cannot change other people. People have um, deep roots and morals and morals, things they've been doing for a long time. And a lot of people cannot see their way. For example, if um, if you understand that um, that the Christian religion, the white Jesus is um, is fabrication, whereas a Christian, a, a person that you talk to, has been uh, having those pictures on the wall, in his car, and um, all around his table and everywhere. He might not be so willing to give those things up. 
So do not get in an argument with that person about these things. You can only share with him what your understandings are. And then he has to be able to digest and understand. Do not force feed them. You can only share with them the knowledge that you have. And it has to be presented just like you're presenting food at a table. When you're presenting food or dish at a table or setting the table, you have to put the plates down gently. You cannot throw the plate, nor can you throw the food on the plate. You have to place it gently. Do the same thing to your brother. Place the food gently on the table before your brother. Let him see how pleasant it is. And then he will eat. So he can taste and see how good the Lord is. As you have tasted and see. Present the food before him gently. And let him digest the word of God. As you have so richly ate of the table of the Lord. And, uh, and go from there. But mostly family practice. Empty your mind. Empty the word of God. Empty those things that Satan has. And been bombarding you for all these years. And to fight the good fight. Empty your mind. Do not desire to be talkative or communicate on every subject you hear. Learn how to be silent. Even if you hear a conversation and some people are wrong in their conversation and you know it, you don't have to get into that conversation. Pass it by. Let it go. You don't have to comment on every subject, on every topic. Learn how to be silent. Learn how to be quiet. Okay, this ends the segment on lay aside every weight. I'll say thank you for listening. And thank you for choosing six Exodus. And I pray peace upon you, your lives, and your family. Until the joyous returning of our Lord. The Lord said that the Lord will present to himself a glorious church. The Lord also said that he will present us before his presence with exceedingly great joy. Until that time, Mitzvah. Have a great day.